There have been a ton of requests for the Izmir review, and today the wait is over. Speaking of waiting, I recently got my logistics email to confirm my address for the Kickstarter delivery. Shops will receive their orders first and then regular backers, but either way it won't be long now. Some shops have already received their products, so if you ordered from one like Gamers Guild, you may be opening packs very soon. And speaking of, thanks to everyone who bought through my affiliate link after the last video. You got in just before the Kickstarter display price went up by $100. The $250 price is steep, but if you're looking to buy at least things aren't sold out and you can still get the Kickstarter and regular displays or starter decks, with free shipping on orders over $100. If you aren't worried about the alt arts and foils, and are willing to wait a little longer, I'd recommend going with the regular displays now. And if you want to support the channel at the same time, feel free to use my affiliate link in the description. So when you open those sweet packs, how will you know what's good? Let's dive into the review. The Izmir heroes consist of Akicha and Taru, Afanas and Senka, and Lindua and Ma. They all have top tier art, but are a little more difficult to play and might not be on top of the charts during the first expansion. Akicha and Taru have an ability which essentially lets you always go second. On one of your turns on the days where you go first, you can tap the hero to pass priority to your opponent. That lets you be reactive and use powerful spells like Off You Go or Kraken's Wrath to trade efficiently with your opponent's cards. Pair those with cheap characters like Studious Disciple that can further prolong your day before you commit a lot of mana and you'll have a solid control strategy. Afanas and Senka love spells, and anytime you play one, you'll get to give a boost to a character. Things like the rare Mage Dancer or cards with Anchored or Seasoned that synergize well with boosts will be especially good here. Then you can fill out the rest of the deck with cheap spells to have plenty of ways to activate your hero effect. Lindua and Ma show a different side of Izmir and focus on sacrificing. Tap the hero to get a free or cheap Ma token, and then you can either boost it up as you sacrifice other cards, or you can even just sacrifice the token for something stronger. Between efficient sacrifice fodder like Moonlight Jellyfish and powerful payoffs such as Kawatha to Center, you'll have a fun deck that gives you a different way to play the faction. And with the introductions out of the way, let's see what cards are out there to support each of these heroes. We'll start things off with Moonlight Jellyfish. I'll be ranking these cards for each of the heroes as a 1, 2, or 3, where a 1 means I think the cards are only going to see a little or no play, and a 2 means that I think the card will be played in some decks for the hero, while a 3 means that I think that the card is going to be included in almost every deck for the hero. For Akisha and Taru, I think that Moonlight Jellyfish is a 2. It's a cheap character, so it'll synergize well with your normal strategy, but you won't really be able to take advantage of the effects here. For Afanas and Senka, I think you'll use your filler cards for spells if they don't have a great effect, so I'll just give this a 1. And for Lindu and Ma, I have this at a 3. It's a low-cost card that you can use like an after you, and then a cheap tribute you can get value out of twice. For the rare version, since you're not using the effect really in Akisha and Taru, I'm just going to give it a 1, and the same is true for Afanas and Senka. But for Lindua and Ma, I still think this is a 3. Obviously, you can't play both versions, but you'll definitely be running one of them. And if your hand's empty frequently, you'll definitely be upgrading this to the rare. Another one drop is Studious Disciple. I think this one's pretty generically good, and the discard from Reserve Effect can pretty much work anywhere. I'll give this threes across the board. With the small card pool, I think it's going to see a lot of play. It fits naturally into Akisha, and since the effect has more synergy than Moonlight Jellyfish for Afanas, I bet you'll run it there as well. And as a common, this can be another easy sacrifice for Lindua and Ma. The rare upgrade is honestly pretty strong, but I just feel like with so many more flashy rares, people are rarely going to choose to use this for one of the rare slots. I think this fits best in Akisha, so I'll give it a two there. Maybe you could use this to set up for something like a Kraken's Wrath where it would be pretty expensive without the discount, but for the other heroes I think it's not worthwhile so I'll just give it a one. The common Mage Dancer starts small but it can grow pretty quickly as you play spells. Akicha wants followers with good stats, but since you'll only play a spell maybe once a turn or on some you might not even play one at all, I think this will just be a two. But in Afanas where you're going to be playing spells left and right, this is really good and it's definitely a three. You'll be running this or the rare version for sure. In Lindua, since this costs two from hand and it'll be hard to boost it consistently, I think it'll just go with some of the other cards we've already looked at, so I'll give it a 1. The rare gets pretty exciting now. At the end of the day, if it has 3 boosts, you can draw a card. That can turn into some great advantage if you pull it off twice, which will be easy to do in Afanas. This works great with meditation training and helping hands, so I'm going to give it a 3 there. I think Mote's decks won't run this for Akisha, but if you really like her in this card, you could build your deck in a way to use it there, so I'll give it a 2. And for Lindua and Ma, I think this is just too far off of your sacrifice game plan to see play. Common Izmir Stargazer is kind of like a Mage Dance that doesn't get boosts. Maybe this is a 2 in Akisha because if you don't play a spell it's going to have slightly better stats, but I don't think this will see a lot of play. And for the other two heroes I'm just going to give it a 1. The rare version gets some surprising sacrifice synergy going, which doesn't really have a place in the first two heroes, so I'm going to give it a 1 there. For Lindua and Ma, I thought this was going to be really good, but having tested it it's just kind of okay. You get two boosts out of sacrificing it, but since you have to pay one more for this than the normal cards that you sacrifice, it's only really getting you one worth of stats above average, so I'm 
gonna give it a two. People will definitely run this, but I think it's gonna come out of a lot of lists over time. This common lady of the lake has the most vanilla stats ever. I think they're honestly fine for an aggressive deck where you're okay if you and your opponent both advance for an expedition, but that doesn't really fit with a lot of Izmir's more controlly game plan, so I'm just gonna give this a one everywhere. And now the rare version can remove fleeting from the next spell you play. This could be a good way to get double value out of the spells that naturally have fleeting from hand, but it's still underwhelming the first time you play it, and I think there are gonna be rares that are gonna be good from both the hand and the reserve, so I'm gonna give this a one everywhere. Tooth Fairy is one of your best sabotage options. You'll be picking from this or Spycraft. I'll give the common a three in Akisha and Taru and a Faunus and Senka. For Akisha, the disruption can be a good way to get rid of a card that you don't have an answer to in your hand, and at first I wasn't sure that I'd run this in a Faunus, but from testing it's ended up in every one of my decks. For Lindua, I'm just gonna give this a two. I think you could definitely run it, but it's a little expensive from the reserve, and depending on the meta, you might just focus on your own combos instead. For the rare version, it costs less from the reserve now, which is still a nice after you for Akisha, so I'm gonna give it a two. But for a Faunus with so many rares fighting for a spot in your deck, I definitely don't think you'll have room for this. And for Lindua, this actually has better synergy now, so I'm gonna give it a three. You might not have the rare slots for it, but it's definitely the better version for her. Kadigarin Alchemist has some of the best stats for this faction. It's a great day one play and can be a pseudo after you or a sacrifice card in the late game, so I'll give it a three for Akisha and Lindua. We definitely might see this in Aphonis as well, so I'm gonna give it a two, but the deck already has more strong day one options, so I don't think it's totally necessary there. For the rare, you get some extra stats the first time it's played. I think this could be especially good in Akisha where you'll be going second, so I'm gonna give this a three. And I think this could be a three for Lindua as well. If players always keep this for day one, they might as well upgrade it to the rare. But with Aphonis' tight rare slots again, I definitely don't think this will make it in. In Aphonis, the rare slots are especially tight, because you'll want to use a lot of them for out-of-faction spells. Bobby Yaga is one of the best draw in the first expansion. Combined with decent stats from the reserve, I think this could see play almost anywhere. I'll give this a three for Akisha and Aphonis and Senka, because it can be a great day one play to start building your hand advantage. For Lindua, I have to give it at least a two, because the card's just so good. But I think it might be a little less common here, because some players will be wanting to set up permanence on the first few days, and there's also some extra draw you'll get with the sacrifice cards that the other heroes don't have as easy of access to. For the rare now, you get better stats, and all of a sudden you can trade favorably with cards with three twos and stats in Akisha, so I think this is still a three. But for Faunus, while the card is good, I think the rare slot's costly, so the most I can give it is a two. And I'll give the same rating to Lindua and Ma as well. I ran Alice a lot on Exalted, but I've started to be a little underwhelmed with it. The stats and after use are nice for Akisha, so I'll give it a two, but I think there are enough cards now that this will get replaced in the other two heroes. For the rare, the stats get a little better, but as far as upgrades go, this is one of the weakest, so it still just gets a one for Aphonis and Lindua. But in a more aggressive Akisha list that's trying to win early and often and use small step, I think this could still have a play, so I'll give it a two. And next is Baku, which has a pretty unique effect for Altered. Making your opponent discard a card will be really devastating until players learn to play around this type of effect. I think this is a two everywhere, and if the meta calls for it, people will be slipping it into their decks. And now the rare costs more from the reserve, but you get the discard effect both times it's played. In a controlling Akisha, this could be devastating, so I'm gonna give it a three. And even though this is a rare, since you can get some pretty good stats in anchoring an Aphonis, I think it'll be pretty easy to fit this into your curve. And you can even do shenanigans with things like Helping Hand to use it multiple times from the reserve, so I feel like this merits at least a two for him as well. And as for Lindua, I've seen a surprising amount of uniques that involve sacrifice and making your opponent discard a card, so I think there definitely could be a deck that wants to use this, so I'll give it a two for her as well. Next is Flamel, which has pretty good resource gain, but it is a little expensive. Thankfully though, you get good stats for the cost. You definitely like the stats in Akisha, and for her and Aphonis, returning something like an off you go or magical training to your hand will be really good, so I'll give it a three for both of them. I think the support ability is also nice nice because with low mana, your opponent will be worried that you'll have access to plays you normally wouldn't. But in Lindua, I'm giving this a 1 because by the time you can play it, you'll need your mana for sacrifice combos. The rare gets resupply, which could set up a spell in your reserve for his effect, but I think that's just a little too underwhelming for a card that you'll often put in the mana early on. You like resources in Akisha, so I'll give it a 2, but for the other heroes, this is just going to be a 1. And next is the first big sacrifice payoff. People might tamper with this in Akisha because they'll be looking for ways to get extra stats, but with the requirement to sacrifice a card in the same expedition, Edition. I think this is a little too hard to pull off for decks that aren't tailored to it, so I'm gonna give this a 1 for Akisha and Aphonis. And while it does fit well in Lindua, it's a lot less flexible than the rare, so I'm only gonna give it a 2. But with the upgrades, I think it's a 3 for Lindua for sure. If you play a 1 cost card and sacrifice it, you'll be able to boost your Ma token twice and then have this as a 5 5 5. With the boost you get from the Ma token and after you pay for a card to sacrifice, this is roughly 7 worth of stats from the hand for 5 mana and then 4 mana from the reserve. And now that you don't have to worry about setting up a character in the correct expedition, it'll 
it'll be much easier to use this card. But for the other two heroes, I think the rare slot and sacrifice cost is just going to be a little too high, so it'll just be a one for them. Dorothy's a pretty cool removal on a body, but it's definitely better when you can use it to remove more expensive cards. This will be good when you can wait to see what your opponent does first, which you can do easily in Akisha, and with Baba's Isba, you'll actually have that opportunity frequently in Lindua as well. So I'll give it a two for both of those heroes. I think a lot of decks will be centered around cheap characters, so I don't think you'll always be able to get value out of this in all of your matchups. And in Faunus, I think you'll want to use a cheap character and then play spells for removal, so I'm giving this a one. With the upgrade, you can use this as a removal twice. Depending on how good this is in the meta, you'll run it or you won't in Akisha, so I'll give it a two. But for Faunus, this is staying at a one. And in Lindua, I think this is a one now too, because the common was a nice tech, but it's going in the mana too much to merit a rare slot. Sakurabu brings an interesting effect to move one of your opponent's expeditions backwards. This can be really good against cards with uneven stats, where you move your opponent into an expedition where the card that they played has zeros. If you can win the expedition you played this in, you'll be going plus one, while your opponent just ends up where they started. This is a lot easier to use if you can play it after your opponent's committed heavily to the board, which will be easier to do in Akisha and Lindua, so I'll give it a two. But in Afanas, I think you'll just be abusing anchored and seasoned characters at this point in the game. The upgraded stats help a lot with winning its expedition. So in an Akisha deck with this as the top end, it could definitely see play, so I'll give it a two. But for Afanas, this is still just too far off the game plan so it's a one and for Lindua I think this was more of a tech so I'm gonna give it a one because I don't think you want to use a rare slot on it. The Kraken's flashy but it's super weak to removal and hard to pull off if you don't build around it so I'm gonna give it a one in Akisha and Afanas. If a deck's gonna use this it'll be Lindua but it honestly feels pretty weak so I'm just gonna give it a two. With the upgrade you only need to sacrifice one card which means less boost for Ma but it will be easier to have enough characters in play. I think this is still a two for Lindua because people will want to play it but it is still a little underwhelming. And for the other hero it maintains that one status. Ada Lovelace is not nearly as good here as it is in Axiom. Putting your spells in reserve takes away their surprise factor, and requiring a rare slot and having aggressive stats that don't go super well with a more defensive playstyle makes me think this is just a one everywhere. Bravo's Blade Dancer has perfectly fair stats from hand and the reserve. In Aphonis where you can boost this even more and take advantage of season, it's definitely a three. But in Lindua, you want your cards to be cheaper from reserve, so I'm giving this a one. When you sacrifice a character, it goes to the discard pile regardless of if it has fleeting or not. So for Lindua, you like to have cards that are cheaper the second time played, and then you can try and get more out of your resources by playing the cards two times and having them be cost effective the second time when you sacrifice them. And for Akisha, I almost gave this a one, but I guess the stats are decent enough and the cost is low enough that it can maybe be a two. Red's almost the same card, but it costs two from hand and reserve, which is still fine, but I feel like the lower cost of Bravo's Blade Dancer will make it easier to follow it up with a spell afterwards. So I feel like this definitely comes second to it, so I'll only give it a two for Aphanas and just to one everywhere else. I think Izmir has enough draw that it doesn't really need Huamula's infinite resources, and with just okay stats, I'm gonna give it a one everywhere. And Lear's Gall does some tricky stuff with your reserve, but that doesn't really synergize with any of the heroes, and with just okay stats, I'll give it a one for Lindua and Aphanas. And the only reason I'm giving this a two for Akisha is because you have some pretty expensive cards like the Bastion and Sakurabru that you can discount with the support ability. Hathor has great stats and can recover spells like off you go, so I'll give it a two for Akisha, but I'll give it a one for the other heroes because they have enough of their own good stuff and don't need to run this. Muna Caregiver provides access to Anchored, which the faction doesn't have a lot of, but it's a little hard to pull off, and I think most of the time you'd rather just use Meditation Training. I wish you could combo this with Sacrifice to put it in the reserve, but since it'll go to the discard pile, it's really hard to do anything cool with this, so I'll give it a 1 everywhere. And Smithal Harvesters can anchor itself, but the stats are pretty bad and it's pretty hard to buff it anywhere besides Aphanas. You could set this up for a tribute on the following day in Lindua, but you have enough cheap sacrifice options, I don't think it's necessary, so I'll give it a 1. And in Akisha, I think there are better 1 drops, so it'll be a 1 as well. And for Aphanas, I'd probably run Sneezer Shroom instead, so I think it's just going to be a 1 here too. Speaking of Sneezer Shroom, I think this is the better anchored plant for Aphanas, so I'll give it a 2. It is nice that it grows over time and that you can stack boosts on it, but with a lot of competition from the dancers and uniques, I don't think this is a must run. And then the other heroes there's not a ton of synergy so i'm gonna give it a one wardish trooper has good stats but you can get pretty similar cards as common so I think I'll give it a 1 everywhere, except for an Akisha where I might give this a 2. You have a pretty bad matchup into Ordis, and this is better into their tokens, but even then, I still don't think it'll see a ton of play. And while Monolith Archivist is alright at blocking, I just feel like that's a losing strategy, so I'm gonna give it a 1 everywhere. 
I could see this being alright in Akisha to set up a sabotage for a card that's on the board on the day before your opponent's about to go first, but it's only alright for a rare, so I'm just gonna give it a 2. And for the other heroes, I think you wanna be a little more proactive, so I'm gonna give it a 1. Order's Cadets is fine, but the faction doesn't really have any synergy to take advantage of the two characters, and you can find this reserve effect elsewhere, so I'm just gonna give this a 1 for everyone. And since they get the 3 cost version of Attorney instead of the 2, I think this is pretty easily outclassed by things like Baba Yaga, so I'm just gonna give it a 1. Thoth is strong, but only really if you perfectly block your opponent so that they don't advance and you get the tokens, which you may be able to do in Akisha, so I'll give it a 2. And I think that's a little too gimmicky for the other heroes, so I'm gonna give it a 1. Anubis is a lot harder to use here than in Ordis, so I'll give it a 1 for Akisha and Aphanis, and a 2 for Lindua, only because you can get additional synergy out of the sacrifice effect. And this attack is strong, but once again it's gonna be harder to abuse here than in Ordis, so I think it's pretty much a 1 for Aphanis and Lindua, and maybe a 2 for Akisha. If your opponent commits heavily and you play it on the other side, it can kind of be like a 6 cost Sakurabu where they have a net advancement of 0 and you'll be moving forward 1. Time for the spells, which Izmir has a lot of. Magical training is a great way to cycle, and it makes up for itself even if you use it once. So I'll give it a 3 for Akisha and Aphanis. For Lindua, I'll give it a 2, because she has other draw, and usually you want your 1 drops to be something that you can sacrifice afterwards. With the rare upgrade, I think this is still good in Akisha because you can draw two cards for three mana, but it's not a must run, so I'll give it a two. And in Aphanis, I think this is super good, but the only problem is you have so many other rare spells you want to run as well. So it might turn out to be a three, but I'm going to give it a two to play it safe because I think you might end up opting for something else instead. But for Lindua, I think you'd use this upgrade on a sacrifice card, so I'll just give it a one. And speaking of sacrifice cards, Gift to Self is a great one that can draw you cards as well. Maybe this could see some play in Akisha, but it pretty much just breaks even by the time you get rid of itself and the card it sacrifices, so I think this is just a 2. And for Aphanis, you want to keep your characters on the board after you play a spell to boost, so I'm going to give this a 1. But for Lindua, where you get 2 boosts when you make a sacrifice, it fits pretty well into your game plan, so I'll give it a 3. The upgrade costs more and draws more, but I think it's a little overkill, so I'm going to give it a 1 for Aphanis and Akisha. Especially with After You from Baba's Isba and a growing Maw token, you might be able to fit this in in Lindua, but it's definitely not necessary, so I'll just give it a 2. And Spycraft is a pretty cheap sabotage. While you don't get a body, that's fine in Aphanis since it's a spell, so I'll give it a 3. And with the control nature of Akisha and maybe trying to drain your opponent's resources with Baku, you might really want this as well, so I'll give it a 3. But for Lindua, I think you're going to care a little bit more about having stats on the board and your own game plan, so I'll give this a 1. The rare version is honestly a pretty good upgrade. You'll see a lot more cards when you get to play this again from the reserve and resupply one more time, but I feel like it's just too big a tempo loss to play this for 3 and not affect the board, so I'm going to give it a 1 everywhere. Off you go is one of the best common cards in Beyond the Gates. While it can only hit characters, costing 2 from hand is so efficient. And even though the reserve cost is high, most removals like this have fleeting, so getting a second use out of it seems like an upgrade. I'll give this a 3 for all of the heroes, and I'm confident you're running a playset in Akisha and Aphanis. In Lindua, it isn't crucial to your main game plan, but it's still so good in many situations that I think it'll see a lot of play. The rare costs more, but it can remove 4 and 5 cost characters now too. While some people might try this in response to Robin Hood, there aren't very many 4 and especially 5 cost cards that will be relevant. So I'll give this a 1 everywhere because I don't think it's worth making it worse in most situations, just to have it be better every once in a while. Conjuring Seal is a lot of draw, but once again, it's a huge tempo loss. Maybe in the slowest of Akisha decks, you could run this, so I'll give it a 2. But I have a hard time coming up with situations where this will be worthwhile, so I'll give it a 1 for the other heroes. And the rare becomes even more of a tempo loss, and with the rare slot as well, I just don't think it's worthwhile anywhere. Even though Banishing Gate costs 4, it's surprisingly one of the best removals for the faction. Being able to deal with any character in permanent is so good, so I'll give this a 3 for Akisha and Aphanis, where I definitely think it'll see play. But I'm going to make the prediction that Lindua will be running Anubis or Boom instead because they have more synergy, so I'm just going to give it a 1 there. And while the rare can be used twice, since it's only good in some matchups, I don't think it's worth the rare slot, so I'll give it a 1 everywhere. Kraken's Wrath is the best way for the faction to deal with the wide board, but the 5 cost is pretty high. I think Akisha needs something like this to deal with token decks, so I'll give it a 3 for her. But for the other two heroes, I'll just give it a 2, because I think you'll only run it if the meta calls for it. And with the upgrade letting you take out 4 characters, the card becomes a lot more flexible, which I think Akisha will love, so I'll give it a 3. For Aphanis, I think we were just iffy on the common, so the rare slot's definitely not worth it. But for Lindua, where you have a lot of low-cost characters and access to after you, you might actually be able to get pretty good value out of this, so I'll give it a 2. And this next card's crazy. It's basically an alternate win condition, because if you and your opponent are both one away at the end, you can play this during the day and win before checking expeditions. With bad stats and cards like Sakurabu, Akisha's really bad at tiebreaker, so I think this is a must run for her, so I'll give it a 3. And for Lindua, if your opponent always plays to the hero side, they can pretty easily trade 
expeditions every day. So this can be a great way to close out a close game. So I'll give it a three for them as well. For Faunus, this can be good too, but you're a lot stronger at closing the game out naturally at the end. So it might be a little bit unnecessary. So I'll only give this a two. While this can be dead early, it can also steal back otherwise unwinnable games. So players will definitely be divided on if they love this or hate this. The upgrade loses fleeting, and if you get to the end of the game and you're two advancements ahead of your opponent, you can just play this two days in a row to secure the win because they can't catch up in expeditions. But because of how situational that is and how weak it is to sabotage, I think it's just a one everywhere. And while Celestial Blast is an incredible removal, discarding two cards, it's just way too expensive. So I'm going to give it a 1 for Aphanis and Lindua. And the only reason this gets a 2 for Akisha is because if you are running the Izmir Bastion, it's the best card to combo with it. And while the rare version draws a card and would be good with the Izmir Bastion, I think that the rare slots need to be saved for cards that you'll use more consistently during your game, so I'll just give this a 1 everywhere. For the out of faction spells, Boom is pretty similar to Banishing Gate, but you decrease the cost by one and have to sacrifice something. If Akisha decks want to take more turns during a day, they might run this, so I'll give it a two. But it's pretty unnecessary, and in the Faunus, it'll be harder to have something to sacrifice, so I'll give it a one. But this is an amazing blanket removal and has synergy with Lindua, so I think it's definitely a three there. Helping Hand is great for resource game, but I feel like Akisha and Lindua can't take advantage of it quite as much, so I'll give it a two. Maybe it'll be good if they're teching something like Baku or Blade Dancer, but it's definitely not necessary. On the other hand, for Aphanis, this is probably your best spell, so I'll give it a three. It automatically gets you to three boosts on your Mage Dancer and lets you reuse your best cards. Intimidation's another really great generic removal, but having Fleeting and giving the card back to your opponent means it isn't great for the resource battle. If it's a perfect answer for situations that Akisha and Aphanis face frequently, I think it'll see play, so I'll give it a two. But I think Lindua won't run as much removal, and if they do, it'll be something like Boom instead. I think Ride the Bifrost is just way too situational, especially for a rare, so I'm giving it a 1 everywhere. And Beauty Sleep can be a pretty good way to close out games, but because it's only really good against Anchored until the very end of the match, I don't think this is necessary, so I'll give it a 2 in Akisha and Aphanis. And in Lindua, I see it having even less use, so I'll only give it a 1. Meditation Training is insane in Muna, but I don't think you have anything good enough to anchor in Akisha and Lindua, so I'll just give it a 1. But with all the boosting, this will be a powerful card in Aphanis, so it's definitely a 3. And Celebration Day is just so expensive for a card that only prolongs the game. That could be perfect when setting up the Kattegur and Akisha, so I'll give it a 2. But I think a lot of decks aren't even going to run the Bastion, so I think it's definitely not necessary. And for the other heroes, it's a 1, because it has no place there. Looking at the permanents, it is nice that Baba Isva replaces itself, but because of the tempo loss and since you already have access to After You, I think this is redundant in Akisha and only a 1. And you won't have enough stuff to sacrifice in Aphanis, so I think it's a 1 there as well. But in Lindua, this fits pretty well into your game plan. Since it is such a loss of tempo though, I'll only give it a 2. And for the rare, the story is pretty much the same for Aphanis and Akisha, so it's still a 1. But now you can play this and a 1 drop on the first day in Lindua, which makes it a lot easier to fit into your curve, so I think it's a 3 this time. And if you want even more draw, you can play Aether Shard, but I think this is just such a tempo loss that it's not going to see play anywhere. For the rare, you get more cards, but it doesn't fix the problem at all, so it's still a 1 everywhere. And for the category, Izmir Bastion, this is the absolute craziest card that is just way too weak to removal. If your opponent takes this out, you get nothing, and they're surely winning both expeditions that day. I think there's no way you can afford to play this in Faunus or Lindua, so it's definitely a 1. But it's just so crazy that I think people will try to make it work in Akisha, so I'll give it a 2. Maybe with enough sabotage and discards from Baku, you can get rid of all your opponent's cards and know they don't have a removal spell. But I think most likely this will just be in fun decks because there are more consistent win conditions. The rare can help you get double use out of your best spells, and I mean, if you're playing this card, maybe you go all in on it, but it's still too weak to removal, so I'm just going to give it a 2 for Akisha and a 1 for the other heroes. And starting every day with a Brass Bug is nice, but without Sierra and her hero power, I just don't think it's worth setting this up and losing both expeditions on the day it's played, so I'll give it a 1 everywhere. If you just want the free character each day, Ordis Carrier is probably the way to go. In Akisha, since you have so much removal, I feel like you care about the body more than the stats, so I think this could be alright here and I'll give it a 2. The cheap characters you're already playing might be enough though, and some people won't want to deal with the tempo loss. And in Aphanis, you can do a similar thing by playing your anchored character, so I don't think this type of effect is necessary here, so I'll give it a 1 for him. But in Lindua, I think this just might be a 3. If you have this out, you don't have to worry about playing characters to sacrifice for the rest of the game. If you're only sacrificing once a day, you might have enough cards like Jellyfish that you don't really need this, so it might fall out of favor. But in my testing on the games I've drawn this day one, it's so good. So I think at least at the start of the expansion, it'll be seeing a lot of play. 
And the last card of the set is Grand Endeavor. This is a tricky card, because once again it dies hard to removal. The other problem is in most games, over two days you'll just make up for the expeditions you lost on the day it was played. I only think you'd ever be able to get enough value out of this in Akisha, because you could use things like Celebration Day and Sakurabu to prolong the game enough that you can really take advantage of the effect. But I feel like that's a lot of work for an alright card, so I'll just give it a 2. And for the other heroes where something like that is harder to pull off, it's definitely a 1. Thanks for sticking it out with me to the end. Feel free to bring up any deferring opinions about the ratings in the comments, and leave a like and share what faction I should do next if you want to see more reviews. I also wanted to give a special thanks to anyone who's made purchases through my affiliate link, and remind anyone who's looking to pick up more products that you can come back here and find it in the description. The channel recently passed 500 subscribers, and altered is gaining popularity as packs make it into players' hands. Thanks for watching. If this review got you excited about Izmir, check out these gameplay videos to see Afanas or Lindua in action.